stuff and you'll get arthritis, skin cancer, probably one of the common chronic diseases like CHF, COPD, diabetes. At All County Healthcare, we teach you how to manage your disease. We make sure you know how to take your medications and how to recognize signs and symptoms before requiring hospitalization, no matter how many visits it takes. You didn't move to Florida to be sick. You moved here to enjoy the rest of your life. And that's exactly what our team of nurses, therapists, and aides at All County Healthcare help you do. The following programming is furnished by you and your doctor. The content, information, and opinions expressed during the related show are those of the show personalities and guests alone, and not those of Vic Canellis Media Group, its parent, affiliates, or stations. VCMG Live is not responsible for any content, information, or opinions expressed. User bears full responsibility for their reliance on such content, information, or opinions. Amp2.tv presents You and Your Doctor, teaching you to live a longer and healthier life. Proudly sponsored by All County Healthcare where people are the heart of our business. All County Healthcare is a Medicare certified agency where one call will service all your home care health needs. For more information, call 954-717-7027 or visit our website, allcountyhealthcare.com. Now, let's get informed to living a longer and healthier life. Here is your host for today's show. Welcome everyone and good evening. Welcome back to another episode of You and Your Doctor sponsored by All County Healthcare. You're able to listen to us on on 96.9 and 95.3 and you're able to watch us on amp2.tv. I'm your host Raymond Phillips and today we have a very special guest with us today Dr. Zara Khan. How are you doing today? Hi I'm great how are you? I'm doing very well and we are all very excited to have you on our show tonight. Dr. Zara Khan's office is located at 16215 South Jog Road Suite 204 Delray Beach Florida. And if you want to call her to make an appointment or schedule an appointment with Dr. Zara, you're able to call them at 561-448-3848. Oh, I'm so excited to get into the interview today. <laughs> Me too. So just to get started today, how about you tell our guests and listeners a little bit about yourself and your background within your medical specialty? Sure. So I am an endocrine surgeon. And um, that means that I went to medical school just like every other physician. Afterwards, I did a general surgery residency for five years. And then after that, I did another year of subspecialty training in endocrine surgery. And it was a year to take time to focus on um, the diagnosis, workup, and treatment um, of surgical diseases of the endocrine glands. Wow, that is a whole lot of schooling right there for sure. So how many years in total did you go to school for? Um, so if you count college, then, and I did a, I had to do a post back actually, cause as an undergraduate, I studied English and I didn't take oh, any pre-med requirements. No. So yeah, I didn't know I wanted to be a physician initially <laughs> when I was in college. So I did, that's eight, nine, um, 14 years. Wow. So 14 years after high school for schooling. Wow. You know what that means? You know your stuff. So, <laughs> so endocrine surgery. So what does that entail? So um, the endocrine system controls um, a lot of things in the body. Um, endocrine glands are um, produce hormones that affect all, you know, all sorts of functions in the body, metabolism, uh, temperature, um, a lot, a lot of things, mm -hmm. but endocrine surgery specifically uh, refers to diseases of the thyroid gland, mm -hmm. the parathyroid glands, and the adrenal glands. Mm, that's very interesting. So what are some common diseases that you see within the endocrine system that you deal with on a daily basis? So um, most of the patients that I see have diseases of the thyroid gland. Mm -hmm. And um, thyroid dysfunction is a really hot topic right now because a lot of people, um, a lot of people have overactive or underactive thyroid mm. um, disease. And uh, the symptoms for both of these are, are very nonspecific and they're very common. Um, hair loss, uh, fatigue, 
weight changes, sleep disturbances. Mm. Um, it, it, it runs the gamut and it's things that a lot of people experience. So um, I don't really deal with dysfunction of thyroid hormones. Um, mm. I deal with people that have surgical problems of their thyroid. So um, the most common surgical problem is thyroid cancer. And um, this usually shows up as, um, initially as thyroid nodules. Mm. So a lot of people have thyroid nodules. Half of, half of peop the people, you know, will get thyroid nodules by the time they're 60. It's just that we don't know them unless we look for them. So thyroid nodules are just, um, they're tumors, they're small growths within the thyroid gland, and they can either be benign or they can be cancerous. So, um, when nodules get very large, and even if they are benign, they can cause compressive symptoms. Like um, if they get very large, people can start to notice them. They can feel them. They can even see them once they get very large. Oh, wow. So I'm sure a lot of you have seen people with um, big thyroid glands. So mm. if even if it's benign, if it's very large, and there aren't a lot of, um, there isn't a lot of space in the neck, so it can compress the, the windpipe and uh, cause trouble breathing or it can compress the esophagus um, and cause trouble swallowing or just be uncomfortable just because it's so big. Mm -hmm. So I treat people for enlarged thyroids that are causing those kind of symptoms, even if it's benign, mm. if the nodules are so big that they're causing those symptoms. Just to be safe, right? Yeah, just to, just to relieve people of those symptoms. Mm, absolutely. So, so a big thyroid like that is called a goiter. Okay. Um, the other type of thyroid nodule that I um, deal with surgically is a suspicious nodule, um, something that's suspicious for cancer. So once a patient knows that they have a thyroid nodule that is suspicious, the next step is to get a biopsy. And um, the biopsy, it's just a small needle biopsy. Uh, just to take a few cells from that thyroid nodule, the pathologist will look at it under the microscope and make a designation as far as how suspicious it looks. Mm. Um, if it looks suspicious or if it's confirmed for cancer, then um, the next step would be surgery. Mm. And uh, the surgery is to remove either that side of the thyroid or the entire thyroid, depending on what the results are. That is very interesting, because I know on a, on a day to day basis, not many people think about how important their thyroid is to their, you know, their function of their entire body. Are there any other symptoms that you look for when people are dealing with cancerous thyroids? So unlike the symptoms that I talked about at the beginning that have to do with overactive or underactive thyroid hormone, thyroid cancer, is, it's, it's a pretty silent disease. The only mm -hmm. way that we, um, the only way that people find out about it is if they are found to have a nodule. Mm. Um, and nodules are either found, like I said, by um, people palpating them themselves or their primary doctor feeling them on a physical exam. Uh, another way that they're found actually is through getting imaging for something else. Mm -hmm. So patients will go in and get a CT scan of their head and neck for something else, some other symptoms, um, or of their carotid um, arteries, and it will be in what we call an incidental finding because you saw it when you were actually looking for something else. Does that happen um, frequently with your patients? They end up finding these issues accidentally? Um, I wouldn't say frequently, but it is a good portion of patients. They find them, um, they, you know, they learn that they have nodules through other imaging. That is very interesting too, because so is it more so people aren't able to truly really realize that there is an issue until it gets to the enlargement of the thyroid? It's hard, unless, unless the nodules are very large or if they're very anterior in the neck, uh, most people wouldn't know because they, they usually are very small um, and nodules do grow very slowly. They grow very slowly over time. Uh, because thyroid cancer specifically is such a slow growing cancer and uh, people do very well with it, there's no, um, there's no universal screening for thyroid cancer the way there is for breast cancer or colon cancer. Um, we use this word cancer for a lot of different diseases, but every cancer behaves very differently. And uh, thyroid cancer is, some, pe some physicians say it's a good cancer to have, even though cancer is such a scary thing. Um, you know, you hear the word and, you, and patients 
rightfully so, get very concerned and um, they want to know about their prognosis and what the treatments are and what the recovery is. But uh, the vast majority of patients with thyroid cancer have a subtype of cancer that um, can have almost approaching 100% cure rate with surgery. Wow, that's actually truly remarkable, though, because um, I can definitely attest to just the word cancer being so scary because I feel like so many people associate the word cancer with death. And, you know, being able to take care of yourself, take care of your loved ones, your children, your family is so important to so many people. So when they hear that they have cancer, it can be very, very intimidating. So as a doctor and as a surgeon, how do you go about minimizing the stress that comes along with people being diagnosed with this type of cancer? I totally agree with you. I think that um, all of those things go through anyone's mind once they, they know that they or one of their loved ones have a diagnosis of cancer. And I think the most important thing is um, is education, you know, having a discussion with, you know, between the patient and the physician um, to really understand what, what does this diagnosis mean? How, what is the treatment for it? How does it affect my prognosis? How does it affect my quality of life? And I feel like, you know, if you can talk to your physician once you have that diagnosis and really get on the same wavelength and get a good understanding of what all of those things mean. Mm -hmm. And um, it really helps to allay a lot of those fears. Mm. That makes total sense though, mm -hmm. because you know, just being educated on what's actually going on with your body kind of brings the tension down a little bit, especially for the patients. So um, in your time working with the endocrine system, would you say that there's any age group that is um, particularly more vulnerable to thyroid cancer or can it happen to anyone? So the majority of my patients are between uh, the ages of 40 and 60. This is the most common age um, that you know is affected by thyroid cancer. But thyroid cancer affects all ages. Mm -hmm. You know, it affects both genders, all ages. Um, it's the most common cause of cancer in women between the ages of 15 and 34. Wow. And uh, it can even affect children. There are some rare genetic syndromes that. Um, that lead to thyroid cancer in children as young as two years old. So um, it, it affects everyone. No, definitely, definitely. So now we're actually going to be taking a quick commercial break and we'll be right back with Dr. Khan to talk a lot more about the endocrine system. All County Healthcare has exciting news for any and all patients with COPD or other respiratory ailments. Listen to what renowned pulmonologist Dr. Keith Robinson has to say. Hello, I'm Dr. Keith Robinson, board certified pulmonologist, medical director at Fusion Health Pulmonary Rehabilitation, and a board member with the American Lung Association of South Florida. We have exciting news for patients with COPD. We now offer IPV therapy at home, which has been demonstrated to improve airway clearance, decrease hospitalization, and improve quality of life of patients with COPD. Please call All County Healthcare for more information about this FDA approved therapy. For further information, call All County Healthcare now at 954 717 7027. That is 954-717-7027, or visit our website at allcountyhealthcare.com. You can also find us on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Remember, All County Healthcare always puts the patient's needs first. You are listening to You and Your Doctor, Living Longer and Healthier, an informative show that helps you find answers to questions you always wanted to ask but did not have that somebody that could make a difference in your life. Call into the show if you have a question at 888-565-1470, and we will put you on the air to inform all our listeners. Now, back to our show. 
Welcome back to You and Your Doctor, sponsored by All County Healthcare. We are with Dr. Zara Khan today, and her surgical practice is located at 16215 South Drog Road, Suite 204, located in Delray Beach, Florida. If you're looking to schedule an appointment with Dr. Khan, you're able to call the office at 561 Four four eight three eight four eight. Well, welcome back, Dr. Khan. You know, we had a quick commercial break. <laughs> good to be here. Very good to be here. And so moving forward our interview today, let's talk a little bit about how common thyroid cancer really is and if people should be, you know, concerned of this happening to them in their future. So thyroid cancer is, it is common. The incidence has been increasing for the last 40 years, um, but we don't really know if that's just because it's becoming more common in the population or um, if we're just becoming better at detecting it. Uh, the special thing about thyroid cancer is that unlike other cancers like breast cancer, colon cancer, pancreatic cancer, it actually grows very, very slowly. So people can have it for, you know, maybe even years before we find out. Um, about it and still achieve um, a cure. Uh, the, people always ask me what, what are the risks of thyroid cancer um, since there isn't universal screening for it, it's not indicated. Um, so the only things that we know for sure that are risks for thyroid cancer because we don't really know how it develops. Mm -hmm. um, there are two things though that can lead to, um, that, we, that we know can lead to thyroid cancer. One is a strong family history. So, um, you know, if people have um, grandparents and then parents with thyroid cancer, then they might have a genetic syndrome that would predispose them to thyroid cancer. Mm -hmm. um, the other factor is ionizing radiation. And, oh, definitely. And this is something that, um, you know, would happen in an in, in extreme situation. Like, for example, a nuclear accident, you know, there are certain historical events that occurred where uh, populations in the decades following did develop very high rates of thyroid cancer, um, and it was because of that exposure. Um, radiation exposure um, in the hospital with tests, you know, normal x-rays, CT scans, the amount of radiation that people receive through these sorts of tests are so, so small that they have not been shown to show any increased risk of thyroid cancer. Um, that being said, um, radiation, like external beam radiation therapy, such as, you know, if a patient had a previous history of head and neck cancer where they were receiving radiation directly to their head or their neck, mm -hmm. that can be a risk for thyroid cancer. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, there's no diet, uh, there's no dietary risk, there's no um, viral, you know, um, risk factor out there, Noth nothing else that we know. You know, that was actually going to be my next question, if there's any dietary or health changes that we can make personally to help prevent ourselves from developing thyroid cancer. Not that we know mm. of, no. I mean, for, for thyroid disease, um, you know, like thyroiditis mm -hmm. um, or, you know, benign goiters, which is an enlargement of thyroid, um, iodine deficiency historically used to be a cause of that, but you know, iodine deficiency, especially in this country, is so incredibly rare don't that they, we don't uh, see oh, that. I'm sorry. Yeah, <laughs> that's okay. Don't they put it in our salt as well? Exactly. Most of the time. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It's 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 in the salt, and um, so it's it's almost impossible to have an iodine deficiency mm -hmm. in in this day and age. So you were say um, genetics, and then if someone were to be exposed to high level of radiations, those are two things that you, that we know of mm -hmm. that can cause the thyroid Correct. cancer. Okay. Correct. That's very interesting though. I find it very remarkable sometimes about how much we know about the body, but then how much we don't know about the body. It is. And it's very interesting. There's so much more that we can learn collectively. I, that's the exciting thing about yeah. medicine. There's always more to learn. Mm. Um, it's always, you know, so it's, it's gratifying to learn um, everything that we've known so far, but it's also vital to stay on top of all of the new research that's coming out because there's so much more for us to learn. I know, absolutely. Both my parents are physicians and they that's the most important part of their job is to stay current with all the research that's coming out because you don't know if you're able to save someone else's life with the new research that is becoming available to everyone. Absolutely. Again, truly, truly amazing. So tell me a little bit about the recovery process that people with thyroid cancer will have to go through after their surgery. 
Sure. So um, this is something that a lot of patients have a lot of um, apprehension about, naturally, mm. because surgery is it's scary. I really, it is. you know, I don't like to say, oh, it's just a minor procedure, because I don't think there's any such thing as a minor procedure. Every surgery is is very, um, you know, it's important. You know, you're going to sleep. Um, you're having someone else, you know, operate on you and mm. and um, perform this intervention that you know it has to it has to go well and you have to feel good about yourself afterwards so um, but at the same time people recover very well from thyroid surgery um, they come in it's elective it's scheduled it's mm -hmm. um, never an emergency and um, the surgery itself takes a couple of hours and then you know they usually stay in the hospital for one night but after the surgery patients are able to eat move talk um, normally and their pain is very minimal. Um, the thing that bothers patients the most is usually a sore throat that resolves within um, two or three days after the surgery and um, I tell people to take one week off of work just to be safe, um, you know, make sure that they give themselves time to, to relax and recover and um, but most patients feel back to their baseline about three, three days, four days after surgery. Wow, that's remarkable. So it really isn't Again, I know all surgeries, something is being done, so you shouldn't mitigate what is actually happening to your patients, but the fact that within you know, three, to day, three days to a week, they can be up and running, that probably definitely eases the tension and the stress of a lot of your patients. Definitely, definitely. Mm -hmm. I think that um, you know, once patients understand what thyroid surgery actually entails, they, they feel a lot more relieved um, about the whole process. Absolutely remarkable, again. And um, for people who are watching tonight, do not be afraid that we are talking about the cancer chapters again. Um, and I'm very, very grateful to have Dr. Khan with us tonight to really explain in detail about what this actually entails for both her patients and our listeners and viewers watching tonight. So moving forward, I know that you also work a lot with the adrenal gland. So what are some surgeries that you perform um, that are related to the adrenal gland? So um, for the adrenal gland, I, um, the adrenal is, um, it's a gland that sits on top of the kidneys. It mm. produces um, hormones um, that can sometimes be pr overproduced. So there are three different types of um, biochemically overactive um, disorders uh, that originate in the adrenal. Um, one is called Cushing's and that's too many, um, too much stress hormone. Mm. The other is um, pheochromocytoma. That's another um, type of um, overactive uh, tumor of the adrenal gland um, that can lead to intermittent um, symptoms of palpitation, sweats, high blood pressure. Um, there's a third one that's called Kahn syndrome and um, that's too, that's an overproduction of hormones that can lead to very resistant hypertension. Mm. Um, patients can be on many hypertensives for many years and st still still be hypertensive, and it's because their body is producing too much um, uh, too much of this hormone. So um, once once a patient has a diagnosis of um, one of these biochemical uh, disorders, then we can, the, the treatment for all of them is surgical to remove the adrenal gland um, that is affected in order to normalize the hormones. So um, it's a bit of a, you know, it's, it's a workup, mm -hmm. um, but all of it involves just blood work, um, urine studies to check the, the levels of the hormones and diagnose um, whichever one it is. And then um, the next part of it is localizing because we have two adrenal glands and um, it's important to know which side the, the tumor, the overactive tumor is coming from. So um, once we have both of those in place, the, the next step is surgery to remove it. Mm. So I didn't know that you're able to remove the adrenal gland mm -hmm. without having effects. Do patients who have their adrenal glands removed, do they have any um, issues after the fact? So that's a good question. Um, you only need one functional adrenal gland to um, have normal, normal hormone levels. Mm -hmm. um, so no, long-term, no, they're not affected by it. 
Um, but uh, in the perioperative period, sometimes patients do require um, some steroids mm. to, um, to tide them over until their uh, contralateral adrenal glands um, comes up to the normal function. That does make a lot of sense. So we're running to the end of the show now, but are there any last minute remarks you would like to give to our listeners and viewers today um, about what we talked about today or any tips and tricks that you'd like to send them off with? Um, I would say that, you know, um, for the thyroid, I, I don't think that everyone needs to rush out and get their thyroid ultrasounded just as a baseline uh, because thyroid cancer is, you know, it's, it's, there's no screening for it because mm. it's so, even though it's common, um, it's usually found by the time that it is, um, that it needs treatment. Mm. So I would say the only thing really to, to change and make sure that you do is just have your primary care physician palpate your thyroid um, every year at your annual exam and um, check your thyroid hormones if, if you feel that you're having any of these symptoms to make sure that they are um, within the normal range and don't need further treatment. Mm. And thank you again, Dr. Khan, for coming to our show tonight. I always say it is so important to just shed light on some of the misinformation that's out there in the world. So having the doctors, physicians, surgeons, specialists come on this show is really, you know, a blessing not to just us, but to all of our listeners and viewers out there. So thank you from all of us. Thank you so much for having me. Yes. And we are wrapping up the show now. So make sure you tune in next Monday at 630 for another episode of You and Your Doctor. And we look forward to seeing you then. Have a blessed night, everyone.